to talk about as far as the Pope, but this is something, a glaring thing that stuck out to me. So anybody who claims to be a follower of Christ, uh, I'm surprised if they're not as shocked and appalled by this as I am. I found it to be very disturbing and a very sour note to have while he was here in the United States of America. You can find more reports on InfoWars.com. And Jakari's now back in Texas. He's off a few days and will be back in studio with us uh, Wednesday. Um, Leo Zagami, Vatican Insider, is going to be joining us. He was with us last week. I want to get his take on what he predicted we would see. Uh, would he meet with Putin? What would come out of that? What would the Chinese announce? That would be a big sign on whether the global fix was in or whether there was a split. And we'll get Zagami's uh, expert take on that. But let's go out to break with Pope Francis again on Christ's failure. Here it is. And if at times our efforts and works seem to fail and not produce fruit, we need to remember that we are followers of Jesus Christ and his life, humanly speaking, ended in failure. Kit Daniels, InfoWars. Well, as of last Friday, John Boehner, the neocon rhino, Obama care pushing, open border promoting, anti-gun pariah, announced he would step down. Now there's major pushes on to have Mitch McConnell, who isn't as bad, but is close. I mean, it's hard to be as bad as Boehner. Mitch McConnell is not as bad as Boehner, but he needs to be gotten rid of uh, all the same. And uh, certainly that move is now on. We'll be covering that in the next hour. Biden will have a chance to appear in the first Democratic debate. CNN says Trump has a plan to cut taxes for millions, but to claw back these tax-exempt corporations that move their money offshore. A 10% one-time levy, which I think it should be higher. So we'll be breaking all of that down. And I, I like lower taxes, folks, but I don't like Google and Microsoft and General Electric and all the rest of them, Walmart, moving their money offshore that was made here, writing the laws so they're exempt while they lobby for middle-class taxes to be raised. Did you know that? Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, Wells Fargo, they all do it. They all do it. Just like George Soros lobbies for higher taxes, and it turns out he's exempt from them. So now they're trying to pass a law in Congress to claw back like $8 billion from him. Warren Buffett, oh, I need to pay higher taxes. Then he gets the laws written where he doesn't. We need to raise taxes on rich people. Then it's on the middle class. Because he knows somebody making 30000 a year thinks somebody making 200000 a year is rich. Every actuary shows the guy making 200000 a year literally is the economy. They've got the employees. They get the services. They buy the boats. Their wives buy the boots. They go on the vacations. You get rid of those people, which they're doing, it's over. It's over. We become a third world country. There's no economy. Just giant slums everywhere. And then the high up on the mountain, you know, the, the ultra rich areas and they fly down to the airport by helicopter and never even get down here with the unwashed masses that's what we're going through it's all coming up meanwhile europe seizing homes to house muslim migrants it's now confirmed soros demands europe accept millions of muslims annually china's military advisors it's now confirmed we reported on it sunday kurt nemo reported on it out of the israeli news it's now confirmed by rt in china they're quote heading to syria to help fight isis the chinese have now said Aircraft carrier disgorged tanks, helicopters, missiles, 1,000 Marines, and more battle cruisers are now landing, disgorging troops to fight Islamic State. And China and Russia are inviting the U.S. to actually take out the Saudi Arabian force, which that won't be happening. It's now like uh, the war in the 80s against the Soviets and the proxy war in Afghanistan. But, but you know, we, we, quote, I guess, thought they were good guys then, huh? Well, now we know they're super bad. And Syria didn't attack anybody. So Russia and China are now in the good guy position. We're in the bad guy position, which is being maneuvered by the globalists down the road to set us up for a fall. And our military knows that. That's why they've been blowing the whistle on this. It's huge. Talk about huge. NASA scientists find evidence of flowing water on Mars. The probe picks it up. During the summer months, there are creeks and streams and rivers on Mars. 
It has an atmosphere. It is habitable. Simply amazing. And we now know what the ancients said in legend, that it once had a thicker atmosphere and oceans, and it lost its atmosphere. The Atlantean legends written about by Plato claim that there was a connection to Mars and Atlantis and that Atlantis lost its atmosphere and that, uh, that Mars lost its atmosphere and that we're connected to Mars. I don't know if that's true or not. The ancients said it. Now it's coming true. And Buzz Aldrin claimed there was a connection between Mars and an obelisk on its century moon. It's one moon and an obelisk pointed at Egypt. That's the second guy to walk on the moon. I don't usually get off into flying saucer stuff, but when it's Buzz Aldrin, you got to really ask what's going on. What do the elite know we don't know? So that's some of the news on that front. Huge economic news. This giant news just broke. School, this is not the first time. that This is under, this is under Common Core. Kit Daniels, Infowars.com, PrisonPlanet.com. The story needs to go viral, folks. School asked students for number of guns, political views held by family. What are your parents' political views, the gun survey asked. Does your family own any guns? Asked a high school survey reportedly sent to 100 students. If so, how many? The gun survey, you got a lot of ATF programs where they mentor for the sheriff's department. Guarantee this is part of it. Look into that, Daniels. The gun survey given to journalist students in Hendrickson High School in Pflugerville, Texas, also asked students for their parents' political views. Talk about a scandal. They've also had questionnaires in schools where it asks, you know, what's in your parents' medicine cabinet? Do they smoke pot? What are your parents' political views, the survey asks. What are their political views? The survey is invasive. To the Second Amendment is the great conversation for kids to have, and definitely for journalism because it applies directly to our Constitution. But the question that concerns me are the ones that ask, how many firearms does your parents have in your home and what political affiliations your parents have? Radio host and gun rights activist Michael Cargill said, that's private. Yeah, I guess it's Michael Cargill, frequent guest of this show that found out about this. We need to get him in here about this, maybe on the nightly news. As the survey can be used against a student and his family. This is huge. And I know he just churned this article out real quick. Kit, you might add they've done this before. They have ATF grants. Or they have ATF agents in the sheriff's department, in schools. The last time I saw was in Alabama doing this. And it's all just part of an intelligence gathering database on the parents, which was in the Washington Post Sunday, admitting they've now got CIA psychiatrists, you name it, embedded, running whole teams in psyops in every town and city. And under the rural commission, the Pentagon runs that over the 10 FEMA regions. They're now putting plainclothes military in every state. That's why we said Operation Jade Helm is just further conditioning for the soft rollout of this, not the imminent rollout of martial law. Everything's a conditioning program, like all the major streets shut down for two days in Philadelphia, not allowed to walk around after 10 o'clock at night, no taxis. That's in CBS News. Local chef on papal visit didn't need to close every street, scaring most people. CBS News, see, this is happening. This is the slow, incremental psychological warfare conditioning. Now, joining us for the balance of the hour and a little bit of the next hour, we'll open the phones up for him as well, is Leo Zagami. Leo Zagami uh, is on record uh, being part of one of the most powerful Masonic Vatican uh, lodges and his family uh, being Italian senators and stuff like that. He, he's run for national office as well. He's been arrested uh, for his uh, speech. Uh, he's a best-selling author who, I guess it was five years ago, claimed they were going to put a Vatican or six years ago, a, a Jesuit pope in the Vatican using pedophile scandal blackmail. Then it all happened a few years later. Who he named became the new pope, and even The Guardian and other publications admitted blackmail was used to put him in. Now the media has gone from trying to take down the Catholic Church, which they clearly infiltrated a long time ago, to fully taking it over and no more talk of pedophiles. So he said last week he'd tell a lot from New York, a lot from D.C., a lot from what you he met with, what happened. We see him joining forces with the Chinese president, the communist president, and Obama. He said we'd watch what happened with the Chinese and the Russians. And we see what announcements were made. So from those announcements, Leo Zagami, what can you make of what's happened, sir? 
Hello everybody, hello Alex. I can say that the situation is actually very dramatic because the words of Putin are definitely of complete defiance towards this new world order, clearly stating that every country should be able to be sovereign. And this sovereignty concept was expressed by Putin in his speech to the United Nations just an hour ago, in a way that I think really has uh, showed the whole world uh, uh, that uh, this uh, Obama and his agenda is uh, completely something evil. But of course, the propaganda will make it as something good, uh, as you know. In the meantime, I would like to point out that in the Vatican, there is some serious stuff happening in the last couple of days that, uh, of course, you have not heard of in the US, but it's starting to make news here in Italy because 11 cardinals are basically starting to oppose the Pope and have put together a document that they will present in October at this very famous and important synod and gathering that is taking place with all the bishops. So it's called the Ordinary General Assembly of the Synod of Bishops from the 19th, I think, of October. And, um, and so basically, this uh, rebellion, right in the face of the Pope, uh, sees uh, people like uh, Camillo Ruini, uh, Cardinal uh, Carlo Caffara, um, then we have uh, Cardinal Urosa Savino. I mean, we have many important cardinals that are just saying uh, to the Pope, basically, that he's making a mockery of the faith. And uh, today, uh, on another newspaper in Italy, an important uh, Catholic writer and journalist uh, said, asked Pope Francis to please stop uh, with, uh, with all this. Uh, he, he said that he couldn't accept the fact that Pope Francis didn't even spend one word for the Christians who were being persecuted in the Middle East while he was addressing the United Nations. And at the same time, he didn't address the barbarities of the Castro regime and accepted this cross from Raul Castro made out of the boats, when we all know that the Castros and Cuba were actually throwing, uh, basically they were getting these boats that were arriving from Cuba to Miami, they, they were sabotaging them all the time. So basically a lot of people died uh, leaving Cuba for America in hope of a better life because they were killed by the Castro regime in the open sea. And, and the Pope has said nothing about all this. So um, uh, another thing that here in Italy is really creating outrage in the last few days has been this video report. Uh, stay uh, there. Tell us about that report when we come back and what the meetings with Putin and others signify and Putin's defiance, who's joining the world government, who's not with it, the clashes to come with Vatican insider Leo Zagami. Just a recap. Two months ago, the Pope, in three different speeches and in several letters issued by the papacy, announcements ex-cathedra or from the throne there at Vatican City that global climate change is happening and that we have a responsibility to create a global government to respond to it and that he supports the treaty coming up in Paris that will complete world government and then now we've seen everything else has been added Vatican Insider Leo Zagami, who predicted that this man would be put on the throne years before it happened, joins us. He is the author of The Last Pope. And he shows lightning striking the Vatican in the background on the cover of his book. Then the night we go to interview him, we called him. There's a thunderstorm and lightning was striking the Vatican again. It was crazy. But the cops are coming over to us. We're on the sidewalk, not even on the Vatican, shooting on the square. Uh, it's pretty dramatic footage. Uh, it's uh, Demon Possession Inside the Vatican is the name of the uh, video. It's online at Infowars.com. This is a short segment, long segment coming up. The toll-free number to ask your questions of Leo Zagami is 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. On this subject specifically because it's such a big deal. The mainstream media heralding him as the second coming basically no level of security, not for any royalty, not for a president. Whole cities completely shut down. Philadelphia totally shut down. Uh, just fawning socialist communist media. 
Uh, I mean, that ought to tell everybody something of the world loves 